video we are going to talk about power screws and power screws have more material allocated to the threads compared to uh, standard bolt and screw geometry In fact, for the standard uh, screw or bolt geometry, uh, for a given pitch, we have P over 8 is the typical uh, thread width. This is your screw or bolt geometry versus your power screw where you have more material. And there's different types of power screw geometries, but this is P over 2 for all of the standard power screw geometries if this is the uh, pitch. And the pitch is defined at different places for power screws, but the point here is that this um, width here for the thread is about four times the material that you would get um, in a uh, screw or bolt and that's because there's more uh, stress that's expected at the threads because the point of a power screw is to transmit power and power is work which is force times distance uh, per unit time or our work over time and usually when we talk about the force we're talking about a load that's lifted and so uh, you might be familiar with power screws uh, as uh, car jacks so if you've ever had to change a tire you've used a power screw um, or uh, C-clamps so if you've ever changed your brakes and had to bleed your uh, brake lines or squeeze your calipers back you probably used a C-clamp and that's a power screw as well. Uh, there's other applications of power screws um, and, but we'll talk about the um, most uh, standard uses and geometries uh, which will help us extrapolate that information to other types that are not covered here. <clears throat> All right, so um, one of the most important things that we can do when we talk about power screws is to um, calculate the forces and the typical uh, thread geometries that we use uh, are the most commonly used said thread geometries are the ACME thread and the ACME stub. Um, there's also the square, modified square, and buttress threads and they have different uh, features. Uh, we're going to investigate the ACME thread here um, as a example for uh, how we analyze uh, power screws. This is uh, an ex a problem that w w uh, shows up on the uh, PE exam for mechanical engineers that are doing machine design and um, being able to understand where the equations come from is the intent here. Alright, so if we have um, a screw and this would be the outer uh, this would be the outer diameter that's the thread and the thread has a inner diameter and uh, this is the thread where we actually have a helix that goes around and in the case of power screw we know that the uh, there's often more than one um, 
um, thread per lead um, and we can take a look at if we have a small object on this thread and we want to take a look at if we have this object on the thread and it's acted on by some force to want to raise that object or go up the ramp of the helix um, that's opposed by some friction force times a normal force uh, and we have some weight that's in this direction that would be the, the weight that's normal to the screen the plane here um, and what we want to do is we would like to analyze uh, this little element here and find out what's the load and ultimately what will be the torque that's required to lift this weight and overcome this friction so um, we can take a look at the thread and let's say this is the thread geometry of the power screw in this case it'd be like this would be the thread of uh, an acme uh, an acme thread which would be something like this okay so you can see that this thread has uh, an angle and if we're talking about the the block that block is over here on this angle on this thread okay so the geometry that we care about is we care about these angles we have to resolve them in the right planes to get an expression for the torque that's required to lift this load um, <clears throat> so if we do that we can take a look at this um, uh, profile for this thread geometry you know it might look uh, something like this if we were to project this out and I'm going to just to erase this here so it's a little bit easier to see so if we project this geometry out it turns out that really what we want to know is um, how this looks as it goes up this ramp and we have this force here which is our normal force and it takes place over this angle and this angle here is the thread angle alpha n the thread angle resolved in the normal plane and what we mean by the normal plane we're talking about this plane here where this normal is acting perpendicular to this object so we have this uh, side profile way of looking at this object and this is the the same object if we look up here that's on this thread um, and we have uh, this normal plane but we also have um, this um, part of the thread here that's in this uh, perpendicular plane and so if we look at that same object and it says say this this is the block and that block is here and it's uh, you know going up the plane we can look at the forces that are acting on it and that is the downward force that would be the the weight of the object uh, we have the load which is transmitted perpendicular to the axis this would be the, the QR to raise it and then we actually have this load here which is the friction load which is going to be perpendicular to that ramp that's the coefficient of friction times the normal force uh, but the normal force is really in this plane here you can see in this purple and we have to resolve that over here in this plane so that we can 
uh, do our static analysis. And so if we do that, we can see that this is that portion of the normal force that's resolved in that direction and that's the normal force times the cosine of the thread angle resolved in the normal plane <clears throat> and what we want to do is we want to take a look at these geometries and if we uh, go uh, down here and look at the um, the thread the thread has this angle it has this lead angle lambda and lambda is the angle relationship as we go a distance pi dm that would be the distance um, traveled um, over one revolution that would go L a height L in um, that would that would go up of the lead of a thread so if we want to look at this in the axial and tangential coordinates where we say that this is the axial coordinate and that would be the coordinate along the axis of the screw and this would be the tangential coordinate which would be tangent to going around screw then we can get the expressions for this little block riding up the helical path okay so this would be the weight w or the load this would be the force required to lift that load this would be the friction times the normal force that resists that load and this would be the normal force that is along the thread which would be the normal force times the cosine of alpha n and that is this component uh, here that's this component that's resolved in that plane and this would be for raising the load and we could also uh, derive an expression for lowering the load so if we were to lower the load we would have friction and that would be acting against the lowering of the load times the normal force and we'd have the same normal force in times the cosine of alpha n and we'd have the uh, force necessary to overcome the friction and lower the load and we'd have the weight w okay so this is lowering the load and this angle here is lambda and that's the lambda that we got by taking a look at the distance traveled for it to go up one lead all right so once we have these things defined then we can start to um, sum loads in the axial and tangential directions all right so if we do that and we sum loads we can sum the loads uh, in the tangential direction to zero and uh, we get that the force required to raise the load minus the 
normal force times the friction force times the cosine of lambda plus the cosine of alpha n times the sine of lambda is equal to zero. And if we sum forces in the axial direction to zero, we get that the weight plus the normal force times the friction times the sine of lambda minus the cosine of alpha n times the cosine of lambda is equal to zero. Um, and so what we can do is we can uh, solve for n in the axial equations. So if we solve for n, we get an expression that says that the normal force is equal to the load over cosine alpha n times the cosine of lambda minus the friction force times the sine of lambda. Once we have this expression, we can plug it into the first expression over here, and we can say that we put in in for over here, we can get expression for QR where the force required to raise the load is equal to W times friction times cosine of lambda plus the cosine of alpha N times the sine of lambda over cosine of alpha N times the cosine of lambda minus friction times the sine of lambda. So now instead of uh, considering just uh, the small element where we resolve the loads, if we actually take um, the entire load and we take the entire um, friction force and the entire uh, weight and we say that well if QL or QR is the force necessary to raise this little block um, then we need a big Q to raise um, the entire uh, nut that would be going around the screw and we'd have instead of our little weight we have the overall load that has to be lifted and instead of our norm, normal force in the little element we have our overall normal force then the equations uh, all work out to be the same and we can also say that well if we know the torque that's required or if we know the load that's required and we know the diameter we can just calculate the torque so we can say that T is the necessary torque to raise a load which is Q times the mean diameter over 2 which is just our uh, torque equation which is our force times our radius uh, if we do that then we can <clears throat> take this same expression here we had for Q and say well that's just equal to uh, W times this expression here times DM over 2. So in order to simplify these e expressions a little bit, when we don't always know the lead angle, but instead we may know the lead, we can define the tangent of lambda equal to the lead over pi dm, and that's equal to the sine of lambda over the cosine of lambda. Uh, 
And so if we replace, uh, we try to get rid of the lambdas in this expression up here, we can do that using uh, this relationship. And we can express the torque required to raise a load as W dm over 2 times the friction times pi dm plus the lead times the cosine of alpha n over pi dm cosine alpha n minus the friction times the lead. And this is our power screw lift equation. Okay, that's the torque that is required to lift a load. And it's important to note that the way this was derived is we used we used alpha n which is the lead. I'm sorry, this is the thread thread angle resolved in the normal plane. Okay, so if we are given the thread angle, which is often the case, instead of the thread angle resolved in the normal plane, then we have to relate the two. And the relationship is just that the tangent of the thread angle in the normal plane is the tangent of the thread angle times the cosine of the lead angle. So we can find an expression for alpha n and use these equations above as the inverse tangent of the tangent of alpha times the cosine of lambda. Now often when we use a power screw, uh, I can say power screws, are often used with a collar and that collar looks something like this where we have a collar around the power screw and it is in contact here and so we have to account for this friction so if we have a power screw here these are our threads and this would be our nut then what we have to do is if we have this uh, friction here that's present in the collar we have to account for that friction as well in our lift equations so we can overcome it and if we have if we know what the diameter is of the collar then we can add a term that says that if we have this weight that's acting on this system, this overall weight, that the uh, the weight <coughs> times the collar friction times that diameter over two is our resistive torque or the torque from the collar and therefore we have to add this to our torque calculation okay 
All right, and again, this is just the torque, which would be the um, this weight times the friction is essentially uh, that force, that friction force. So this is our force times distance, I mean for tor force times the diameter over 2, which is just that torque. So this expression here has to be added up here when we're talking about the torque required to lift an object when we have a collar. Alright, now this is the these are the calculations that are required when we are raising a load. Okay, this is for raising a load. Um, and if we are lowering the load, um, what's important to notice is this the sign changes here of that friction and this here becomes a negative. So that's for raising the load. If we are lowering the load, then the torque required to lower the load is the weight times the mean diameter over 2 times F pi dm minus the lead times the cosine of alpha n over pi dm cosine alpha n plus the friction times the lead plus the collar friction which is the weight times the coefficient of friction between the collar times the diameter of the collar over 2 and that is the friction that is the torque that would be required to uh, raise the load um, these are for Acme threads. These are Acme threaded power screws. If they are square threads, then the math is a little bit simpler because the uh, thread angle is zero. So the cosine of alpha n is equal to one and these expressions with the cosine <coughs> of alpha n just become one. So often a bearing is used, a thrust bearing, like a ball or a roller thrust bearing is used. And if the bearing is used, then we, uh, in the collar, then we treat that friction to be approximately zero. Um, the friction in the collar is um, typically between 0 0.08 to 0 0.2 uh, for the typical case of steel against cast iron or bronze. So, self-locking is when uh, if you lift a screw or uh, the power screw has a weight on it, um, what would be the condition for the screw to lock or basically if you're raising a load what prevents let's say you're jacking up your car what prevents your car from uh, backing down the screw and that happens uh, when we take a look at this numerator up here uh, it happens when that negative term is actually larger
where this term is large enough such that it makes this entire term to be negative which causes the uh, torque to change signs if we are neglecting the collar friction and that happens or the condition for self-locking is when L times the cosine of alpha n is less than or equal to the friction times pi dm or when the friction is equal greater than or equal to L cosine alpha n over pi dm then that is the uh, condition for self-locking. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about power screws, uh, we also want to talk about their efficiency. And efficiency is almost always discussed in terms of energy. Okay, And in this case, we're talking about the input energy, which is uh, lifting a weight uh, times the lead angle L or this is your force times your distance so that would be your output and um, the output over the input and in this case this would be 2 pi times T so this would be the torque times distance is the work due to that torque and the weight that's lifted over a uh, revolution um, gives us our efficiency. Um, and this is just your ratio of output energy over your input energy, and we call that the efficiency. So, um, and again, this just came from uh, the work that you get out which is the raising of the load times the distance L uh, over the torque times theta. And then if we express this uh, in radians, then that's the torque times 2 pi radians, or that's the force times distance. That's the work due to the torsion, because torsion obviously is already in Newton meters, uh, and the units of work are in Newton meters, and so the output of the load times the distance over the torque times the distance that that force is acted on is the um, output energy over the input energy. If we want to, we can express that in the variables that we've just defined. And in that case, um, it's just L over pi dm times pi dm cosine alpha n minus fl over pi dm times f plus L cosine alpha n. Um, this can also be rewritten to be cosine alpha n minus f tan lambda over cosine alpha n plus f times the cotangent of lambda. And you don't necessarily need to memorize where these different expressions are coming from. It's just important that you understand uh, where they came from and how you would use them. In fact, for the PE exam in the reference material, there's equations for power screws, there's equation for power screws in the machinery's handbook, and you need to be able to relate the particular thread geometry to the particular problem that you're taking a look at. And this uh, concludes our discussion for uh, power screws.